Hello guys, welcome to the Bald Eagle 242 YouTube channel. Today I've got an old John Deere LT160 mower here. It's got a crack in the seat. Actually, it's got a few cracks in it. I'm going to show you a really good way to repair these. What I'm going to show you that's a little bit different is how to prepare the surface so that when you repair it, it's going to last a long period of time. The entire process I'm going to do today to repair all the cracks in this seat is going to cost me less than 10 bucks in materials. One thing I do want to make sure before you watch this whole video that you understand, the yellow that comes in this material is not a perfect match for a John Deere seat. It has a more mustard yellow to it. What this is, is it's a great alternative to a $50 seat for the low back, the cheap ones and that's not a John Deere or a uh, high back seat like you see on this mower. These seats start at around 80 bucks. What I'm going to show you how to fix this is going to be less than $10. If you went to buy a true John Deere brand seat, you're going to start at around $150 on up from there, depending on what kind of seat you get. This is a cheap alternative. You can put a cover on it too. A cover is going to run you $35 to $40 by the time you get tax and shipping on it. Again, this is less than a third of that cost. This is a cheap, effective repair. Cosmetically, it's not perfect, but it's very functional and it will help prolong the life of this seat enough so you can continue using it. Anyway, the prep work on this is what makes it last. What I'll do is take a knife, just cut this all about three eighths to half an inch deep. So there's actually a slot there. You're not trying to cut out the foam, but you do want to cut this out so there's a slot. If you've got a small crack like this, use your better judgment. There's still some material. And the reason I'm doing that, I'll show you here in just a minute, but the first step I'm going to do on this thing is I'm going to take a piece of 100 grit to 160 grit. I think this is actually 120 but actually sand the vinyl around these cracks. If you rough the area up around the crack or whatever you're trying to stick the material to, make it stick a lot better. Come out about a half inch, three eighths to half an inch outside of that crack. We're gonna go back over and clean this up, but just get this surface rough. You're not trying to really take it all the way down. You're just trying to rough it up a little bit. Now here, even though the crack doesn't go all the way around, I'm gonna bring the material all the way down around the side here just to give it some strength for future too so it doesn't crack again. Same way on the inside here. I'll go about three quarters of an inch to maybe even an inch past the crack and just follow the contour of the seat. But anyway, once you get that all sanded down, I take drywall mesh. You know, I'm not using drywall paper or drywall tape. This won't work. It's just gonna fall apart. So make sure you've got the it's like a nylon, I guess it is, some kind of plasticky material. But what that'll do is it'll help reinforce this. And then I'm gonna take Plasti Dip. You've probably seen other people do this. You've probably seen them use uh, liquid electrical tape. Any of that kind of stuff will work. The big thing is preparing the surface so that the material will stick to it. You know, the best thing I've found to cut this stuff with is scissors. And cut a piece that's longer than you need. We can trim it after we get it in there, but slide that down in that groove. We're gonna pull this apart and put the plastic dip down in there. And then take your scissors, leave about 3 8 to half an inch around the crack. You can always trim more off later if you have to. But just leave enough of that sticking out there. We put the plastic dip on there. It'll actually have something to bite onto and then kind of tuck it down in there. So you can see there, you can see how that comes up there. So we're gonna do the same thing here. Let's use that same piece. Slide that down in there and it can be bunched out. It doesn't have to be perfectly straight. And then just trim it off. And this gives this stuff a lot better chance of lasting and it's weatherproof. Weather resistant, I should say. I don't think anything's weatherproof. Just tuck that down in there so that it'll have fibers and stuff to bite onto. You know, get any loose threads so they don't stick up. Again, you can cut these off later on, but it's easier to get them down in there out of the way in the first place. It doesn't matter if that overlaps a little bit. Now, I'm not going to do that on these. Just make sure you sand them down. Now, one thing I will say here, too, if you have, if this was broke here and these pieces were starting to curl up, cut those off so the curl is gone and then you can put a larger piece of the uh, drywall mesh in there to kind of cover that up and fill it in. And the other thing I will say here is if you have a large section that you need to cut out or there's a missing section, take the material from like fiberglass, work it down in there and then put your plastic dip or your uh, liquid electrical tape, whatever you're using on top of that. But anyway, that's just leftover from a project. If you saw the video I did on the hood repair, um, I'll put a link to that video 
somewhere right about here. Um, so you can check it out too. But anyway, once you get that work down in there, so we got it sanded, we've got our mesh down in here. What I'll do then is take prep all. And, and guys, I get no endorsements from anything in this video. This is all stuff that I've purchased myself. And it really kind of gives this stuff some place to stick to that doesn't have any contamination on it. Uh, this will not hurt the vinyl. It won't hurt your paint. But you can just kind of put it on a rag. And I always go well past the area I'm working on. But just clean all this up all the way down to the edge. But once you get that all wiped down, make sure your mesh is all back in there where it belongs. They'll stick down once we start going over them with this stuff, but just trim them off. Just open this up. Now you don't want to put this on real thick. You're going to put a few coats on. Work it down into the crack as best you can. It'll help hold that together. Now the first coat there, really thin. This one here now, I'm actually going to pull this crack open a little bit and let that get down in there as best I can. And don't worry if these fibers show through a little bit on these first passes. You're going to come back over this a couple times. It takes about 20 to 30 minutes between coats to let this stuff dry. Now on these first couple passes, I'm not going to run this all the way down. I said I'd go about an inch past it. First couple coats, I'm just concentrating on getting it down in the crack. It'll cure or dry much quicker too if you don't put it on real thick on each coat. Try to feather out the edges so there's no high ridge. But anyway, once you get that filled in, that's about all I'm gonna do. I'll feather those edges out a little bit. So I'll let that dry. I'll be back here in about 20, 30 minutes. We'll go ahead and do the rest of it. One other tip I'm gonna give you here that will help you save this brush. Get you a little Ziploc baggie and just put your brush in that Ziploc baggie so the air can't get to it. That'll save it between coats. You won't have to use a new brush on each coat. All right, it's been about 30 minutes here since I put the first coat on. Put another coat on, try to get down in these grooves real good now. Really try to fill it in as much as you can so there's no air pockets down in there. The more coats you do on this, the thinner you put it on, the better it seems to work. Now what I'll do is with each coat, I'll work my way a little bit farther outside of the cut or the crack. All right, we're starting to get somewhere now. Let that sit for about another 20, 30 minutes. Seemed like it was good and dry in 30 minutes. All right, we'll go back and put a third coat on this now. Color's got more of a mustard yellow look than it does a John Deere yellow. On this last coat, what I like to do is put some masking tape, kind of define the edge a little better. It just makes it look neater than just having a rough feathered edge. And come out a little bit past where your last brush stroke was. And I'll bring this down a little bit farther. There's a, a seam in the seat. Line it up with that so the break, so it kind of hides. I mean, the color is a little bit different, but it'll kind of help hide it a little bit. It's an old mower, so it doesn't have to be perfect. And it'll help to make it look a lot better. More of a functional repair than a cosmetic repair. Especially if you got to store your mower outside or it gets caught out in the weather or the rain. Keep you from getting your butt wet when you sit down on all that wet cushion. One thing you got to remember with this masking tape is you got to take the tape off before this stuff dries. If not, you'll peel the you'll peel the plasti dip off with the tape. So you got to do it when it's still wet. So if you're going to do multiple coats after this, you got to retape it each time. Again, too, if your seat is really bad, you could do this to fill in the cracks and the gaps and then you could get the spray and spray the entire seat down. So what I'll do now is just fill that in between the tape and it'll give it a nice clean line. Just go over the edge of the tape and the seat and you're going to pull this tape off before it sets up. I wanted to find that inside edge so I should have put a piece of tape on that too. In fact I'm going to pull this tape off before I finish that other side up there. Stuff does set up I don't want to say set up, but it starts to get tacky pretty quickly. And 
And that ought to about do it. We'll take a look at it after it sets up. I may tape it off and put one more coat on it, but I'd say we're probably done with it. All right, in closing here, I just want to say thanks for watching, guys. I really appreciate that. I'll do a walk around on this entire mower here in just a minute, and I'll show you exactly how this seat turned out. I'm not real happy with the color match. You know, it's definitely a more mustard yellow than it is a John Deere yellow. I still think this is better than putting yellow duct tape on it or, you know, something else to kind of repair it. It definitely seals it from the weather and should keep it from getting wet. This is more of a functional repair. It's going to be seen. You'll see that here in a minute. Thanks for watching guys if you haven't already consider hitting that subscriber button down below hit the like button on this video if you got comments good or bad put them down in the comments below anyway i'm gonna get to the walk around here guys until next time thanks for watching i really do appreciate it all right now that i got the fourth coat on here and it's set up i'll give you an overview of this thing definitely not perfect match on the color but it does make it much more waterproof more functional You know, I wish the color was a little bit closer to the John Deere yellow, but it is what it is, I guess. It's almost worth putting a new seat on this old girl. She still looks pretty good for a 20 year old tractor. It's a 2002, I don't remember if I mentioned that earlier in the video. Without replacing it, better than duct tape. Definitely waterproofs it. That's what you get with the yellow plastic dip on a John Deere yellow seat. Two thousand two LT one sixty.